DJ J. Lou. Yes. What's yes, going on? Yes. Justin Michael Lewis. What yes. do you go by these yes. days? You know, a lot of people call me J, J. Lou, um, Justin, whatever really floats your boat. You know, I kind of just go by that. But a lot of times now I'm just calling myself DJ. People are able to align with DJ more than anything because that's what I've been doing for the last almost 20 years now. And um, all the other affiliate names, they just come with that. It's Super Bowl week too, man. Yes. Big things happen in Las Vegas this week. What, yes. What's been going on since Monday? Because I would say Monday yeah. through Sunday is just an extravaganza. You got Radio yeah. Row. You got events going on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a busy time here in Vegas. Vegas has been waiting for something like this to come for a very long time. Um, I'm excited, even though I'm not a, um, a fan of neither team. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for the money that's going to be brought to Vegas. I'm very excited for all the expansion that's coming through this event as well. This is just one of many. I think Vegas is going to be the hub of entertainment very, very soon here in America. I think we're um, being compared to Dubai at this point, or Dubai is com- is comparing themselves to us. So, um, yeah, Vegas is, Vegas is on up and up, and it's going to continue to go that way in the near future. Yeah, you touch on that, like, multiple different industries. Yeah. Uh, Mark Wahlberg says he wants to bring all of the film industry to Vegas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because from L.A. to Las Vegas, you're cutting taxes there, and also just, like, a lot yeah. more opportunity <laughs> out here to make a lot more money and a lot more movies. Yes. And then yeah. in your world, in the music industry, what do you think is going to take for, you know, Las Vegas to kind of be the prime spot there? You know what? That's a great question. I think Las Vegas could have an opportunity of becoming a music hub if more musicians decided that they wanted to transfer here rather than stay in California. I made the I made the transition during the pandemic. I wanted to make that transition because I wanted to be in a place that was less saturated. It wasn't a financial uh, transition. A lot of people move because of finances. They can't afford to live out in California. I love California. And I also feel like I will probably go back to California at some point. But I do feel like if music is going to be a hub of Vegas, then, yeah, more musicians would need to move here and actually make Vegas their home as myself. I plan on actually making that um, very, very known very soon. I've been in the studio making a lot of music. We've been cooking up a lot of different projects that will be released this year. And those projects, I think, will definitely let people know, like, hey, Vegas is a place that you need to consider to expand into. For sure. I mean, with Usher being the headliner now, Usher um, residency over um, at the uh, MGM. So it's it's, it's expanding, you know, and these are guys that we work with, you know, um, just kind of casually. You know, we bump into each other and we say hi and everything. But if more people decide to come here and say, hey, we want to make this place our home. um, A lot of people have residencies here now, especially at Dre's nightclub. But um, for the other uh, expansions, I think that they need to be um, more uh, diverse. Diverse. I would say more R&B artists need to come out here. Um, more pop artists need to come out here and really make their name known and say, hey, you know, we we Vegas is not just an old artist or an artist that's been known for 10, 15 years. New artists can come here and make a name for themselves. And the funny thing about Las Vegas, too, is that it really doesn't take that long and it doesn't really take that much effort to really know everybody in the community after yeah. a while. Like I don't even live here and I know a ton of people in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know more people here than I do. I'm from Phoenix. I just drove in today. I think I know more people out here than I do <laughs> from where I actually live. Yeah. 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 Vegas is a melting pot. Um, I will say this. I was just thinking about that in the car. It's funny that you just said that because I was thinking like, well, if I moved here now, cause a lot of people are moving here after the pandemic it's actually too late. <laughs> if you're really trying to establish your connections, it's actually too late. So me moving during a pandemic was a gift because before then, when I used to come to Vegas from California, just making that transition, it was almost impossible to get those contacts. Vegas was on fire. Every club was always packed, sold out. VIP was going crazy. And it was just so hard to get reliable contacts. So when the pandemic hit, luckily I was very, very prominent on the scene here in Vegas as a DJ during that time and made a name for myself. And I met 
everyone. I mean, literally everyone from the trash guys all the way up to uh, the the presidents of Tao Group. I mean, Mm -hmm. I met everybody and I also cultivated those relationships. But I don't know how that would really work now that we're four years, well, about two and a half, three years post pandemic where everyone's kind of settled back in to make those kind of contacts again. Because when I made them, people were kind of like, oh, man, like, how can I get work? And I was kind of like that transition too, of hey, I know that you used to work over here, but I'm the I'm the guy during the pandemic that you need to talk to if you want to actually mm-hmm. get paid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was kind of like that buffer to where it's like, okay, yeah, I remember Jay. You know, Jay was the guy that actually gave me a job. You know, when I didn't have work. You know, and that's kind of my relationships. It goes a little bit deeper than just being, um, I guess, on the scene and just kind of bumping into people. It was more of me really just giving people opportunities during that time and making a name for myself, um, both in music and both as a businessman. Yeah. I mean, you took advantage of a time period in which nobody really knew what was going on and nobody really knew what they wanted to do. Right. Because we were all told to stay inside and don't do shit. Right. (laughs) So like people didn't really know what to do. I'm, I'm one of like I had my podcast four years ago. I was going to be a senior in college I'm like everybody's just sitting at home doing nothing yeah. nobody has an excuse not to talk to me anymore yeah. so that's when you like go after the big names and it's kind of like build yeah. your brand and become more credible that way yeah. that way when the by the time the pandemic was over had studio offers sponsorship offers because it's like okay you reel in big names how can we work with you right yeah. so it's like yeah. Some people took advantage of that time off. Some people took advantage of that time to build businesses, at least lay out like the blueprint of what they wanted to do. Sure. Some people got into the best shape of their lives because yeah. all they had to do was lift <laughs> weights and eat well because they were just home. Yeah, that's you know, true. some people yeah. literally looked like they were on steroids yeah, by the yeah. time they came out, were like in awesome shape. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then there's some people that kind of just sat around and were like, all right, I guess I have a year to just do nothing, just a year taken off yeah. my life. Like if yeah. you thought that way, you're one year behind now. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And it's so hard to catch up up because everything's moving so fast, especially with AI coming into play. Everything is moving incredibly fast. It's even touching on music now where music artists don't even really have to go in the studio. They can actually artificially um, enhance their voices and make records completely from AI. So it's changing the game. And I think that that is one of the things that we just cannot reverse. We're already there. A lot of other countries already have this technology embedded into their societies and their systems. We're a little bit behind here in America with that, but I do feel like it's coming very soon. And once that does come, yeah, people are going to be in trouble, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, especially when it comes to really being able to build a solid brand that you can stand on and say, hey, you know, this matters. Look at me. Like, look at my work. You know, a lot of the stuff that used to matter, it's not going to matter anymore. For me, my my strategy when I came into the game was just to meet as many people as I could. That was the old school way of doing it, passing out your flyers, um, going to different events and trying to network, passing out your business card. That was how I got started. I got started very grassroots. But now that doesn't matter. People just toss your business card. You know, people, (laughs) even if you do have a story, it's just kind of like, okay, great. Like what makes you better than this guy's story? (laughs) So nothing really kind of sticks. And I think that's kind of the issue I think we're going to run into very soon. It's like, what is quality and what isn't? You know, what is a solid foundation and what isn't? Um, What looks like quality sometimes can be quality, but how do we defer? You know, it's like, how do we defer between the truth and a lie when the truth and a lie look the same? Mm -hmm. You know, it's very difficult. Everything is by far and away oversaturated these days, right? Yeah. It it sucks having a podcast like (laughs) almost eight years into this. And if it's not a mainstream podcast, you just get thrown into the fire with everybody in their mother's podcast right like people who are like stuck in the basement doing seven episodes and quitting you just get thrown into that mix right yeah we're like you talk about ai people just generating fake everything whether it's (laughs) fake music in that industry yeah uh fake pictures on social media yeah fake you know whatever fake a fake following fake brand you know the people do it and they get away with it right and and sometimes it helps their community and and there's like benefits to it but like you're not really going to build an authentic following you know because it doesn't happen overnight sure, right sure. There, there's people that you know expect things to happen very quickly and don't really ha- they haven't really prospect what delayed gratification looks like they sure. want it now like you want that gratification sure, now sure, sure but it doesn't happen that way right no absolutely i think you you hit on a very important topic and that is and i would i would like to relate that to music mm-hmm. so before they used to have artist development 
artists used to come off of, um, I guess, you know, grassroots, putting out a song, getting discovered by an A&R and actually having that um get you know getting your first label meeting and saying hey you know we like your music you know but we just need to touch you up here we need to touch you up there so now that we're in this new stage of music especially in the future and we're in the future now <laughs> there is no artist development because of social media so like you said when it becomes fake and what's real and what's not a lot of times you're going to see the quality decline because the labels are going to make the mistake and say oh my god this looks like a great artist and then later they find out like, oh, my God, this artist doesn't have real followers or, oh, my God, this artist doesn't have, uh, um, you know, a lead vocalist on their song. This is not, you know, their voice or they have auto tune or whatever. So it's coming to a point where it's like, OK, as long as the real outweighs some of the bullshit, excuse my French, but, you know, I feel like that's kind of like where we're going. It's just kind of like if, if it just kind of outweighs it. I think that's just kind of like where we're going because everything is kind of just riding the line. Mm -hmm. Well, to touch on that, yeah. I feel like the more you go, like my number one goal as a podcaster, I've been doing this for so long, went to school for journalism and broadcast television. Like it, it was an art form. That's what made me fall in love with this. Yeah. Where like a lot of people look at it as a business. Yeah. Like there's a lot of money in podcasting right now. How can I make as much money as I possibly can? Yeah. I, my goal is to ride out this wave of everybody having shows to where it's like, okay, when the dust settles, when the dust clears and all the skeletons are gone and have been exposed. Yes, yes. You're one of the legit shows still remaining, right? There's yes. going to be a few hundred shows that are remaining where like in your industry, people are probably going to get big record deals and stuff and then they're mm -hmm. going to be easily exposed. I don't think that someone could fake it for years on end and be successful for years on end. Eventually, yeah. you're going to be exposed and then the people that truly deserve to be there are going to be the ones that stand the test of time. Yeah, yo, you're exactly on point i've been saying this for a very long time because i've been doing this since i was 12 and i'm 30 now so when i look at the the journey i've been like oh my god you know i've seen people come into the game and you know two three years in they're way bigger than me of course and then they're gone yep or you know people get caught up in different industries you know i'm you know just doing things that they have no business doing losing all their money you know going through bankruptcies and things like that and when I look at my career, I say, okay, well, you know, I didn't get the national or the world global fame. You know, I got a lot of followers as far as through going viral and things like that, not music related, but I'm very happy with it because I can at least say, okay, you know, I'm still here. I'm still able to do the things I need to do to put into my art so that I can still remain in the game. And I think like, that's what you were saying. It's like, you know, how many more years can you go without having to just quit? I just looked at that yesterday. I was looking at like everyone on my following list, for instance. And this is <laughs> this is not disrespect to you because I unfollowed everyone on my page because I still keep in contact with people yeah. that I you know want to keep in contact with. But it just became so busy to where I was like, I mean, like this is not real work. And I just got caught up in just looking at other people's stuff. And I'm like, OK, the people that I know that are really work and we're not looking at social media, we're offline going to the gym, coming back on a computer, back to the gym, you know, going to a meeting, you know, coming back the next day, you know, 24 hour plane trips, you know, we're doing different things. We're not just, you know, online all day. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a system in place to be able to operate at a certain level, to be able to produce certain amounts of content at a, at, at, in a quantity of content at a certain quality level. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And I think a lot of people don't, really look at it that way they look at it as kind of just um i think uh some people they look at it as not being busy enough you know or being unproductively busy uh but i look at it as being consistent and i think that's the key to success mm -hmm. i'm with you though I, I need to go through my my followers and kind of do a detox <laughs> of some people because there's a lot of people i don't even know or have ever talked to or people i haven't talked to in like a decade that yes i, I it's just clout you know it's just like clutter and yes I will say yes. 6 million followers following zero. That's a pretty impressive <laughs> ratio right there. I don't think that's ever been done before. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, Taylor Swift. Um, yeah. She's not yeah, right? <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Swift, she has 278 million uh, followers. Um, zero following. And actually, that was the one. That was the reason why I kind of got a little inspired. But mm -hmm. then I got a little bit kind of like, okay, I don't want to be an ass. Mm -hmm. And just 
unfollow everyone. But then after I saw Taylor and I said, okay, well, you know, if she's focused, I'm, I can be focused like Taylor Swift. And <laughs> Well, here's the thing. The real ones that are in your life, you could reach out to via text or phone call, right? Yeah. It's like you don't really need social media to know what's going on and the people that you truly care about's lives. Yes, yes, yes. And I mean, you know, I'm not really a phone guy. I'm more of a, you know, let's go grab a drink. Let's smoke a cigar. You know, let's go out and do something like let's 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 have a guy's night. Let's just enjoy enjoy the vibes. I'm that kind of guy off the scene but instagram is weird because i think that you gotta kind of have a persona and an ego on there but i'm trying to make more impact this year so coming on the podcast and things like this is important i think just to let people know who you are you know outside of just posting pictures and videos of what you're doing all the time but being able to really get down into the core of the person to know hey you know this guy is cool i kind of like this guy i didn't really get to see that other side of him um, just by looking at his content. Yeah. So I think that's what this does a lot of times. What would you say about this culture in Las Vegas? Because we talk about yeah. like things coming over here, like Los Angeles, the film industry potentially coming over here, music industry. There's a lot of celebrities. There's yeah. a lot of public figures, a lot of influencers, a lot of big money deals being made, a lot of big money people, a lot of egos, yes. right? <laughs> how do yes. you, how do you be, again, like wanting to be, because yeah. the music industry, you can associate with the entertainment industry, right? Yes. How do you go about finding those who are authentic when it comes to people who you know, like, okay, they're a genuinely good person. I want to do deals with them versus when you know someone is fake. Because yeah. whether anybody wants to admit it or not, they're, yeah. they're, they're out there, right? There are, there yeah. are fake people out here trying to make it and just do it for themselves. Hollywood's been known for that for years. Yes, yes. But then there's, there's people in Vegas, there's people in Phoenix, there's people in New York, Boston, Chicago, Miami, Dubai, yes. Toronto, wherever you want to go, Nashville, Austin, Dallas, yes, Houston. Yes. They're everywhere, right? There's yeah. pe- there's people who are disingenuine who make it seem like they're genuine and then there's people who are yes. just genuine trying to make the the shit pop, you know? Yes. How do you differentiate you know who's who? Yeah, absolutely. Uh two things, just transparency and purpose. I I I go by transparency and purpose a lot of times when dealing with people because if I can ask a person, "Hey, how much money do you make a day?" You know, there's certain questions that you got to be able to ask people just to kind of get to the root. So a lot of people, you know, I, I know a bullshitter because I used to be a bullshitter. So somebody can come to me and say, oh, yeah, like he doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. And then when I ask a question like, OK, how many businesses do you own? You know, it, it changes the tempo of the conversation yeah. and not to be an ass, like, you know, not, by all means, not to be an ass. But you get to a certain point, I think. In, in your in your business where it's like, okay, I don't have time anymore to try and figure out after five or six meetings whether or not you can afford my services. Mm-hmm. I need to know like right now, like, hey, how much money do you make a day? Oh, okay, I only make, I don't know, $200, $300 a day. Okay, well, unfortunately, I'm, we can't do business because, you know, my cost per day is 3000 you know, and it's just kind of different like that. And a lot of people um, kind of just fall off because they just understand, like, at that point that, OK, this guy is not playing any games. and He's not going to beg for my, <laughs> you know, beg right. for me to do business either. Um, and then it's purpose. Right. Like I didn't I didn't come on here to charge uh, charge any money. I yeah. came on here for free um, because I wanted to support. And I think that's the, the quality of purpose, because people that actually don't need it. They're not going to be jumping up and down and say, hey, you have to pay me to come on your podcast. I think people that really have it and really are doing what they got to do, they're just going to come and just support. And because they see your purpose and they also have a strong purpose that they're trying to um, to to uh, provide through your through your uh, through your channel. Right. And yeah. I think and that's a good topic because I've been discussing that and kind of debating that the past couple of months, mm-hmm. you know, people who go on each other's shows and like what we're talking about could provide value for one person. It could provide value for one million people, you know, yeah. which could result in something down the line, you know, that you could monetize or like really help someone out versus, you know, either you requesting money to come on the show or vice versa, me requesting you to pay to come on the show because there's yeah. people who do that, which is like it's good. It's good business. I was talking about the business uh, portion of podcasting earlier Mm -hmm. there's people who look at it as a business and they they make a good living off of it Mm -hmm. versus people who look at it as an art form sure genuinely just want to get to know people and connect with good people Mm -hmm. who have the right intentions and want to make the most for themselves and the people around them sure sure 
Sure. Yeah, I think it is always going to be a business involved with podcasting. I'm actually really close with the CEO of the entire podcasting um, network. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I met him at down, down in Arts District here in Vegas and uh, about two and a half years ago. And he's always been telling me, hey, come out to the podcasting convention because they do it every year. And I just never made it over to do it. But I know that for him, he was just saying that if more people understood podcasting, they wouldn't treat it as a business. Yeah. And by that, I, he, he was saying that if more people said, hey, I have a, like I said, a purpose for being on this podcast or to provide information that would resonate, then the money would automatically come. And I think a lot of people don't make a lot of money in the industry. Like there's so many, like you said, it's a lot of saturation because a lot of people don't have a purpose for what they're putting out. They're just flooding the industry with content without it having any purpose behind why right. people actually want to tune in. Like w- what's going to make me go viral like this, yeah. right? What, what's <laughs> what's going to pop off? What topics can we talk about that people will engage in immediately so that we yeah. have we have the good looking numbers to pitch to potential endorsement deals and sponsors yeah. and companies, which I get it's all in yeah. good name and you're trying to make money and get by and do the things you want to do. That's what we all want to do. Yeah. Uh, but when does it, because when I went to school, even like six, seven years ago, it was like, a form of like, this is a dream job, dream opportunity to get to do this. We're like, yeah. now everybody can do it. And they're kind of like twisting the rules a little yes. bit, right? Yes. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. I think that the art is always going to be the art and people are going to be able to see that, especially at a high level. Now, unfortunately, just like in business, you have we're one percent or ninety nine percent. So the one percent are going to be able to see value in you. And that's the customer you want anyway, because they're going to say, hey, you know, I really like you, Jack. I'm going to come on your show and they're going to support. But the 99 percent, they really don't matter anyway, because they're watching everyone's podcast. They're subscribed to every channel. They have no filter. You know, they probably drink a thousand beers. Yeah. And like I was saying, there's healthy ego, there's toxic ego, and there's just people that are just really, really confident in themselves to the point where yeah. it just looks like, oh, what an egomaniac, right? Yeah, sure. well, I mean, look, there's yeah. a guy uh, who just did Pat McAfee show today. He's going to be over at T-Mobile Arena for the WWE press conference. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Seems like a selfless dude. Seems like everybody that does interviews says, oh, uh, who knows him? Great dude. Yeah. Dude's got a massive ego. Massive ego, yeah. but it's a good ego. Like yeah, it, he does yeah. well with it, and he provides for others because of it too. Yes, yes. Versus people who just use all of that to say, "Hey, look at me." Yeah, yeah. No, I love The Rock. Um, thank you, The Rock. Actually, Project Rock follows me on Instagram. Um, nice. Yeah, really cool. I met their their senior team during the UFC fight week, and they actually gave me a sponsorship on my last fight. Uh, during my boxing, they sponsored my entire wardrobe for that. So I'm really appreciative of The Rock and um, the Project Rock team. Thank you for your support. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, this is this is uh, this is more about just who is your person, who's your character. You know, in life, we have to build ourselves, and our character defines how successful we'll be. If people like your character, people will buy your stuff. People are going to support you in whatever endeavor it is. If you're selling ice cream <laughs> and people like your ego, depending on how you're serving your ice cream, I don't know if you're putting, uh, if you're lighting fire in before you serve it in a cone or whatever it is, people will tap into that character because they really like that person. Now, authenticity, like you said, ego, it won't make sense if the ego is fake because what happens a lot of times is that sometimes people, they'll portray the ego online, but then you meet them in person and they're completely different. So as long as they match online and in person, I think that's a good ego. Right. And that's where you have longevity. Like I was saying yeah. before, like ego where it's like, like, oh, they're this, that, that, and that on social media. But when yes. you meet them, they're nothing like that. That's when you just fade into <laughs> yeah. irrelevancy, right? I've had multiple people in my life who just like, are like the most talkative person in the group chat. And then you see them in person and they don't say a word. I'm just like, that's kind of like, it annoys me a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, like, why don't you yeah. talk like you do when you text? Um, yeah. People are very confident behind this thing, right? Yes. But they're yes. not, a lot of people aren't confident face to face. Yes. I, I'll be honest with you, man. I actually am an introvert, extrovert. So me too, man. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got into this, everybody was like, you want to be a talk show host? How are you going to do that? Cause I, you couldn't get yeah. two words out of me, but 
Yeah, no, no, exactly, exactly. I was a very quiet person when I went out. I used to always just kind of stick to myself. I used to kind of be the guy at the bar, really not trying to make too much a noise or attention. I've always been a loud dresser though. So it's mm -hmm. like I naturally drew attention to myself, even though I didn't want the attention. But it's one of those things where when you come into who you are as a person, then that actually is able to come out through you. So it's just more just uh, development, I think, when it comes to people that aren't comfortable there in that space, just kind of working on being able to be more transparent with yourself and say, hey, I can do this. I can get this other person out of me instead of keeping it held down because you're, you're, you're not feeling secure in a situation. So yeah, it's insecurity, but it's not a bad insecurity. You can always bring that out if you like. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. the double side coin of being who you want to be versus being who other people want you to be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because the fear comes from you thinking that people are going to judge you if you're not the same person who you're portraying yourself to be. So that's the fear. But as long as you can say to yourself, you know what? Who cares? I'm going to do this. I'm going to be myself. And also when you're putting out the content, make sure you're putting out content that relates to who that person is, who you are, you know, because we're always going to be back and forth if we have a conversation about what we think about before we go into different situations. Oh, am I going to wear a red coat or am I going to wear a blue coat? Am I going to do this or am I going to do that? All these decisions are, I would say, ego driven because why yeah. does it matter? You know, at the end of the day, why does this stuff matter? Because we're trying to figure out if people will like this one or if they will like that one. So everything revolves around ego. OK, what kind of watch do you like? I like this watch. OK, well, we're going to make this in blue, yellow and blackface. OK, why? Because most people buy in those colors. Oh, that's ego again. Mm -hmm. So it's always ego driven things going on. But, you know, back to what I was saying before, as long as the ego online, if you're a badass, then be a badass in person. You know, if you're if you're a guy that flexes online, don't don't come into the club with your chain tucked in. Flex out like you flex online. So be as transparent as you can and be honest, you know, with the audience. I mean, you seem very confident in that. And I think a yeah. lot of people out here that you meet too and the people you surround yourself with are in the same lines or like everybody like knows who they are. This is who I am. Take me or leave me. Right. Yeah. Is there any ounce of you that is still kind of like has little insecurities like that where it's like, oh, a vast majority of people like this. So let me do this just to be like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. Justin's got it going on because I'm one of those guys who like there's a lot of people in my at least my business circle who love cars. They love the watches, yes, they love the yes. sneakers. Dude, I got sneakers that I've been wearing since I was 16 years old. These are like Jordan 4 green, green glows from 2014. <laughs> uh, I drive a Ford Fusion. It works. It's got heated seats. I love it. Uh, <laughs> this watch was gifted to me. The, the only watch I own gifted to me. You know, like, yeah. I, it's like I have stuff that works. Why do I need to spend all my hard-earned money regardless yes. of how much you make? Like, no, if you have the money to yeah. spend – regardless yeah. why do you need all of that stuff is it yeah. too, is it because you love it or are you trying to impress yeah, other people yeah no great 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 honest question so yeah there's different insecurities that i still work through every day i think we all as people have our own insecurities in some way i don't think we're perfect at all i think that we're all works in progress but i do believe that once we master our insecurities that we have that really boggle us down like things like i don't feel good about myself certain questions that really just hit the soul. Once you get those out the way, then it just becomes little things like, like insecurity of mine would be like, I wonder if I'm eating too sloppy. You know, I'm sitting at the table, we're at a nice restaurant. Am I eating too sloppy? You know, little insecurities like that, that don't matter. But, you know, just because I've been in situations where I've been told, hey, you know, you're chewing, you're eating with, you're talking with food in your mouth and things like that, really just bettering my etiquette. So it's really insecurities about etiquette now for me. Am I being more respectful to this person mm. because of their culture? Am I being, uh, am, am I being too aggressive uh, because of my culture? So like, you know, just really just trying to figure out things like that. Those are the things I deal with insecure wise. Um, but as far as, um, what was the last part? Just like the materialistic stuff. <laughs> materialistic, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, materialism, I think, is what sells a lot of uh, in entertainment business. So, yeah, when it comes to the business side of it, I think my brand resembles urban luxury. 
So I try to incorporate a little bit of the culture into the brand so that people can understand that it's still hip hop because outside of me uh, promoting my brand, I think a lot of people get my brand confused with more urban instead of being more mainstream mm -hmm. open format which is what my brand is. I, I mix and match with both crowds. I'm the guy that would have a car with big rims on it, but I'll be going and DJ for Tesla. You know, I'm just that kind of guy. Like I have these grills in, but under this shirt, I have a button down, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, varsity jacket, and I have a button down um, custom embroidered shirt. So, and I have an AP. So it's like, I mix and match the two and I just try and make them makes sense you know as far as for my brand mm -hmm. you know it's always been that way and you know i actually know where it comes from so my mom was very proper she always took me shopping she always was kind of like the fashionista and then my dad was also in fashion but he was an urban guy from new york so he was always kind of a hustler kind of type guy so he would bring me jordans and things like that and then my mom would you know, take me to Neiman Marcus. So I had the urban and the luxury both mix and match as I was growing up. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of cool. That was just, and my brand, I think, resembles a lot of materialism because my my parents pushed materialism on me so early. Mm -hmm. I was spoiled as a child. You know, I got a lot of different things uh, growing up. And I think that can also be a detriment to a child as well. If you have too many things at one time, like I had a cell phone, like when I was six, like, you know what I mean? Just different things like that, that most people didn't have. It's like, you almost ha feel like you deserve it. Once you get to a certain point, like that yeah. entitlement kicks in. It's yeah. Like you get one thing. It's like, okay, thanks for the gesture. They give it to you again. It's like, okay, now yeah. you're kind of expecting it. Give it to him again. Sure. It's like, okay, now I need it. And then give it to him again. Like you're just entitled. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would even like to talk on the narcissism, you know, mm -hmm. like, it, there's like the way that you're brought up can trigger certain things in your ability. I think we all have narcissism traits in certain aspects. I think healthy wise is how you manage those traits. So for me, I had to figure out what is driving me to spend audacious, uh, crazy amounts of money on clothes. What is driving me to do that? You know, and that, and, and once I got that answer, to say, oh, I'm doing this because I do like fashion, but I also like it because other people like it. Then I had to figure out, okay, what do I like that other people don't like so that I can be authentic to myself? Mm. So it's little things like that that I think we all have to kind of work through in order to figure out the root of who we are and, and how to be as honest as we can to our audiences. When I, when I do a lot of my fashion now, it's really about what I like. It's really not about the name or the brand. It's really about what I think I I am telling my story through, you know, my 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 I'm telling my story through my art. So my clothes have to resemble that story that I'm telling. It has to be authentic. So if my clothes aren't authentic to that story, then I I don't feel like I want to buy or purchase those clothes mm -hmm. anymore. And it's easy to tell what's true, yes. like what's true and what isn't, right? Yes. It's like, okay, he's listening to the machine. He's not <laughs> doing what he wants to do. And then yeah. when you do what you want to do, it's like, ah, oh, that, that's not popular. He's, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand that. That's not trendy, well, right? Because like, what is, yeah. let, let, let's talk about it. Like the music industry, fashion, whatever you want to yeah. talk about. The things that are most popular, like in the mainstream, if you ask nine out of 10 people, it's like, oh, I'm not into that. Yes. It's like, then why is that being pushed so much? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think weird is cool now, to mm -hmm. be honest. I think if you're a little off, you're a little weird. I think that's kind of what's trendy. Just because everybody who wasn't really weird, they already had their like real artists that were in the studio making beats on the MPC, beating the pads in until they're they're hands mm -hmm. were like bleeding you know off the off the beat pad machine <laughs> mm -hmm. you know now a guy just goes in and he just does his thing or whatever so you know it's it's different you know yeah. it's just different the process is it's just different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean it, it's tough yeah for whatever reason 
for people to be true to themselves yeah. and be that version of you that's like, I am who I am. Take me or leave me. Yeah. Like, that's when you're going to find the people that resonate with you the most. It might yeah. not happen right away like everything else. It's not yeah. going to happen overnight. But like eventually you're going to find exactly where you need to be if you're able to go through that shit and yes. shit for a little while. Yes. You know, and then you find the right friends. You find the yes. right girl. Before we were talking, you know, we took a quick intermission talking about finding yeah. the right partner you know and yes. getting in that stage of your life you just have to just continue to just be you and eventually people will yeah. see it that's the hardest thing it's like yeah. pe- pe- people want to be seen you want to be seen yeah, yeah, i want to yeah. be seen yeah, yeah. everybody wants to be seen yeah don't be someone else to yes. be seen yes yes absolutely um it's funny because i've always been a little off a little bit weird and i'm comfortable with that Because I don't feel like I need to be perfect for anyone. I feel like being weird to me is not being an ass, but being just a little bit more unique than I would say the norm. Um, You know, now there is weird that's just weird. And then there's weird that's that's cool, cool, weird. Um, But it's funny because I'm the I'm the guy that will be playing Migos and then I'll go and I'll play Green Day American Idiot. Yep. So I'm just an all over kind of guy, just in general. I'm a kind of guy that'll be in one day, like wanting to do a big Hemi heavy duty truck, you know? And then the next day I want to do like a smart car. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a really just kind of different kind of guy. I really don't have a certain pace. I kind of just, however I'm feeling, I kind of go with that. You know, I, I am very organized, but I also feel like, I don't want to be so organized to where I have to compromise how I feel. Mm-hmm. You know, I just want to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. If I feel like going on vacation, I want to do it. You know, if I feel like going to the gym right now, I'll do it. If I don't feel like it, I'm not going to do it. You know, I just kind of do it that way now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a great mindset to have because not only are you going to be um, kind of well-versed in everything, you know, kind, yeah. kind of given the examples of like, different music you listen to different cars you drive it's like you're well more rounded than most people will be so you can relate to a lot of people yes. which makes it easier to connect to people on yes. on that genuine level and it's something that a lot of people really don't learn right well, i got lucky man i think a lot of times when we look at the greats and the legends a lot of luck kind of plays into these things because there's so many variables So a lot of times we have to recognize the luckiness that we have and that spark to say, okay, am I that person that is being called to do this on a higher level? Or am I kind of like the guy who's supposed to assist and help someone else get to the next level, right? Because there's 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 different callings for different people. So once I realized that, hey, okay, I am called to be a star. I'm called to be on stage. I'm, I'm called to be a personality on a higher level. You know, even though I didn't receive that recognition, I still believe that because that's how I've always felt about myself. Mm -hmm. So once you once you know that, then, yeah, it doesn't take long for other people to start realizing that. So all the parties that I've done as a DJ, all the referrals that I've gotten is all because those same people saw that in me. They said, oh, man, this guy is a star. We do like him. He can come to the party. He can bring a friend. He can fly with us on the plane. He can, you know, so it's it becomes kind of one of those things where it's like as far as how you get comfortable with yourself, everyone else gravitates to you, whether you're popular or not, mm-hmm. whether you're well-known mainstream or not, the right people will come to you if you know who you are. Mm-hmm. Stay yeah. true to yourself, but also know when to shut up and listen too, right? Yes. Especially in the entertainment yes. industry. Yes. Like pe- people who want to get into this industry – the second they get like that first taste of what it actually is, mm-hmm. they're just like, do I actually belong here? Do I actually <laughs> want to be a part of this culture? Yeah. Right. And, th- and it's hard to stay true to yourself it when is. you are in that culture. Right. It is. When was the first kind of culture shock moment you had in entertainment? We were like, oh, this is what it's going to be in my head. And then you got there and you're like, oh, it's, it's very different than what I thought it was going to be. Oh, man. I mean, the first thing for me is just knowing that there's people that you thought were rich and are broke. Mm hmm. That was the biggest thing for me. I thought there was a lot of people that had a lot of money coming into the industry and they just be broke. And that, that's my biggest thing that I had an issue with is because I feel like if we're going to be promoting an industry that is about bling bling and fashion and things like that, there's people out here really working hard like myself who really built a brand, really built a business, really out here making real moves, building real relationships and have real money and then you have these people bouncing around on stage 
with these contracts that don't make no money and their jewelry is all on lease or rent. And people like me, you know, have to take the longer route and we also take a lot more shit. But it is what it is. But I think that's the biggest thing for me is what I see is that when you get around people that say that they're doing this and doing that and they're really not doing it. And then I have to hear about all the stories about people saying I'm not doing it and I'm really doing it. And and it's like, OK, yeah, I don't feel comfortable around you because you really got it like that. And and it's like the industry shouldn't be like that. We should be praising people that really got it instead of the industry that, you know, people want to fake like they do have it and they don't Mm -hmm. because that's a rat race that eventually is going to catch up to you it catches up it's just a longer time for real people like anybody that's real it just take longer you know that's just the thing it just takes longer if you're real it just takes a longer time it just doubles the time like if it takes someone five years if you're real it might take you 10 like if you're if you're real in IT and you're developing apps and stuff, you know, it might take you, you know, if it takes someone six years, it might take you 12, you know, because you're really coding it. You're not calling up people from overseas to code for you. Like, you know, there's all these different cheat codes that people like to use in order to get to the top. And it's like there's no reason to cheat if you really know what you're good at it. Like I I, I had to realize that, too. It's like a lot of people, they cut corners. And then they want to say, yeah, I have a real brand. It's like, you can't build a real brand if you never worked on vinyl. You can't you can't tell me you're a real DJ if you never scratch vinyl. You, you don't know how to look for, you don't know how to, you know, uh, organize your crate. You don't know how to, you don't know how to do any of this stuff. And you can't tell me that that's, you know, so it's just little things like that. There's people I went to college with that called themselves musicians. Mm-hmm. Who literally were just making beats on their laptop using like GarageBand, which like, yeah. I'll credit to you. Like, I guess you're making music. They didn't know how to play guitar. They didn't know how to play piano. They didn't know how to play drums. But it's like, that's a musician to me, right? Yeah. Versus like, obviously, yeah. you know, what you do too. It like takes a certain skill. Yes. It takes a certain mindset. It takes a certain ability to get up there in front of all these people who are <laughs> trying to be entertained by you. Yeah. Right? Instead of like, oh, I don't show my music to anybody. It's all right here in my computer in these files. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. It's just like, okay. And that's why social media is the biggest tool that there is today, but it's also the biggest scam because you really yes, don't know anybody until true. you actually meet them in person that's and true. see what their vibe is, that's right? Because like you could see all of their content. It can look great. It's like, oh, I vibe with him so much. And then you meet him in person, you meet her in person. You're like, oh, they're not at all who I thought they were going to yeah, be. You know? Yeah, it's true. Like I, I've met so many people just interviewing on the show where I'm like, wow, they're not who I expected them to be for better or for worse. There's been instances where it was like, oh shit, like he was actually kind of a dick. Yeah. But yeah. then there's also been situations <laughs> where I'm like, she was was way better than I was expecting. Like you, yes. like you have like a certain anxiety level where you're like, I don't know what to expect here. And it's like, they're a great person. And then you become yeah. friends with them later on, you know, and yeah. then you, you build relationships from there on out. You, we were talking a, a little bit before we started about what people want in relationships, what girls yes. are actually looking for in guys, what boys are looking for in girls. Yeah. I truly believe people are indifferent in everything that they want to do. Yes. Like if you're, yeah. everybody's different and everybody wants different things. Don't listen to social media. Don't listen to, <laughs> you know, other people's personal stories sure. about why, sure. oh, you shouldn't date someone like that versus why you should date someone like this. Sure. You should know in yourself what you want. No, Go absolutely. after that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, being secure within yourself, that exudes out into your dating. So if I'm walking and I'm and I'm and I'm postured correct, women know that I'm a real man. So that's how it just works for me. I know that I'm confident when I walk in a room because people see that in me. You know, I'm already reflecting that so they can so you treat me a certain way because of that confidence. So it, I think it's just the security factors, like how secure you within yourself that you can really uh, exude that so that people will, you know, see that in you genuinely you know what is the biggest plus and the biggest minus in dating in las vegas yeah the biggest plus dating in las vegas is variety so (laughs) if you want a variety yeah this las vegas is great for variety i have a variety and i would say that the variety of women i've dated from las vegas has been great definitely expansion uh from where i come from on east coast definitely an expansion because you're getting women from all over the place Thailand, Japan, uh, China. I'm naming a lot of Asian countries. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Africa. 
South America. Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, so it's a great experience. Um, so that's an advantage. I think a disadvantage is genuine relationships. So I think Vegas is a tough dating scene because genuine relationships are hard to come by. Everyone is moving so fast. Industry works 24 hours. So, yeah, it's hard to find genuine relationships. If you're trying to settle down, build a family, I think yeah. it's tough. Oh, it's tough. I yeah. come from Scottsdale, Arizona. Same vibe. <laughs> Talking about like the night scene. Clubs, yeah. <laughs> a lot of girls mm -hmm. and a lot of lingerie, right? And yes. it's hard. It's like, oh, they're beautiful. But like, are they mm -hmm. actually beautiful on the inside? Some Good are. Question. And again, I'm not judging because I don't know them personally, right? Good question. And you can't judge people till you know them personally. But it's yeah. like, there's that vibe out there where it's like, okay, I don't really mesh with that yeah. crowd and environment. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it your circle of friends, I would love to touch on that. Mm -hmm. Who you associate with is how successful you'll be. So if you're running around with a bunch of losers, then yeah, most likely you're going to be the next loser. So I don't hang around losers. I only hang around winners. I hang around people that like to hunt, like to get it, and they like to eat well all the time. So I don't really do any uh, kind of like BS. Like when it comes to my circle, I always have a strong circle uh, of people and strong men around me to be able to motivate me for one, but then also for us to be able to build together and have that have that seniority together, you know, as mm -hmm. as 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 kings. But um, I'm sorry, your question again? <laughs> yeah, just like the, the yeah. difference between knowing like what a beautiful soul is versus yeah. what a beautiful person looks like. Yeah, yeah. I, it's hard to differentiate because yeah. they come in the same box if it's done right. A beautiful soul and a beautiful person should be one in one. Mm -hmm. But nowadays with social media, she can be a beautiful soul, but she's also bared butt naked online. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how do you differentiate between being okay with your girl having her whole body exposed on the internet and her having a beautiful soul or vice versa? You got women that don't even show themselves online, but they're super insecure in person. So it's like, you got to take the good with the bad. Do you want a woman that never shows herself and she only posts about business and her work that can't really associate outside of just her work? Or do you want a chick who is just likes to hyperly sexualize herself on the internet, but it's a beautiful soul? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which one do you choose? I think they're both kind of like riding the line. But at the same time, we're in 2024 now. It's a, it's, it's a completely new way of dating with Tinder and all these different apps. So, yeah, I mean, the, the girl that you think is going to be your sweetheart, you know, might not be that perfect soul that you thought about you know there might be other things that are influencing her people change all the time too right mm -hmm. yeah year by year yeah year by day sometimes you know uh, i mean yeah i mean say you lost your job is your girl gonna be there you know is she a beautiful soul enough to help you find another job is she a beautiful soul enough to help you uh i don't know on a bad day if you're if, if you're feeling bad is she gonna rub your shoulders is she gonna do something like that or is she gonna complain to you and say you always have a bad day why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Is she going to nag you to death? What kind of woman do you want? You know, like, and that's, and that's a hard thing to say because every woman is going to be a little different, Yeah. but it's like, okay, I don't want to buy your love either. I don't want to have to be transactional with you where every time I sit down with you, I got to spend on you so that you can listen. You know, I'm not going to keep just spending the spend, but at the same time, I don't mind spending on you. But if I spend on you, can you also reciprocate the same respect that I'm giving to you by telling you, Hey, I know you like this. I'm going to get this for you. You know what I mean? So that's how I see it. Where are you from originally? I'm from Maryland, Columbia, okay. Maryland. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So I have a, I have a actually a kind of a mixed background because Columbia, Maryland is a melting pot of, of people from DC and Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So DC is more like very uppity. It's kind of hippie. Yeah. And then Baltimore is ratchet, it's ghetto. Mm -hmm. So Columbia, I had that swag to it too. So that's where urban luxury comes from a little bit too, because urban luxury, urban was more Baltimore and then luxury was more DC. Yep. So um, so my brand kind of reflects a little bit of that too and, yeah. my, and where I'm from. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting getting the best of both worlds too. Yeah, I got super lucky, man. I'm telling tell you, I, it was, and I don't want to say lucky because I did work my ass off to get here and I keep like trying to 
to to tell myself like, hey, you know, you earn this. But I just like to humble myself to say that, you know, I had a better uh, a better environment to grow up in than, than other people that I that I've known. And and I and I humbly say that because I could have grown up in those situations, too. And who knows where I would have been at, you know, mm -hmm. uh, financially and also success wise. Mm -hmm. But I would say that Colombia was a great place because it was a diverse melting pot of people from all walks of life. It was a suburban area. There wasn't a lot of crime. You know, it was a very, very safe place to raise a family. You know, that's where I grew up. It wasn't it wasn't a crazy environment. So I was really, really blessed for that. Mm -hmm. And now you're yeah. out here in the wildest place you could yeah. possibly be. Sin People City. from all over the place, man. Uh, it is Super Bowl week. What else you got going on the rest of the yeah. week? Yeah, yeah. rest of the week. I just plan on um, actually doing some private events um, this weekend. A lot of big names are coming into town. A lot of friends in the industry that I know that I've been rocking with for quite some time now, all coming into town for the big game. I'm really excited to see Usher as well. Yeah. Uh, headlining the Super Bowl performance is going to be amazing. He's had a residency here for uh, almost, I think, two or three years now, yeah. and he's killing it. So big shouts to Usher in his camp. But, yeah, I just plan on just really enjoying the game, uh, going to these events, DJing some events, actually, some private events, and just having a good time, just really enjoying Vegas. Well, I'll let you get to it, man. Yes. I, I got some stuff going on <laughs> today, too, we got to get to. Yeah. Uh, I love – the conversation that we had today. And I yeah. also look forward to having more conversations in the future because yeah. these are like, these are the real conversations yeah. I want to have. Like I said, this is an art form. I don't yes. look at this as a business, even though it is technically my business, Sure, sure. you know, like these, these are good conversations to have. And I love to see where we grow from here. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to that, Jack. And I appreciate you having me on. I, I would like to touch really quickly. Yeah. Um, so I'm boxing now and That's boxing right. has been something that has, kind of entered into my life. And with that, you know, it comes with a lot of different challenges because health is definitely something that I have to prioritize mixed in with my music. So my sleep schedule's changed a little bit because of that. Mm -hmm. But um, we're going after the Olympics. We're really? Gonna, yeah, we're going to go to the Olympic trials this year and try and get in 2025 Olympics. Wow, man. I mean, that's yeah. long-term storytelling, just yes. like long-term. Like, talk about <laughs> delayed gratification, you yes. know? Like, that's yeah. so cool yeah. that you have that. You have yeah. that to look forward to over yeah. the next year. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be, we'll be going out this November uh, 2024. We'll be going to Paris um, for the trials. And then hopefully we can get in, um, get into the uh, actual, uh, well, I can get in, me and my team and place to, to go to the actual Olympics. Yeah, you kick the door yeah. down, make the most yeah. of the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and then we're doing Golden Gloves too. So hopefully Golden Gloves champion, um, we'll, we'll, we'll add that to the resume as well. Well, shit, dude. Well, yeah. then the next time we do do a podcast, <laughs> let's, let's do it in a couple months, we can talk more about boxing and what sure. you got going on there and obviously, yeah. you know, the inspirations that came behind that and some of the experiences that you've yeah. had. No, absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank and you. And eventually, dude, we're going to have to, uh, I think I briefly told you this, possibly getting a steak dinner at STK. Let's do that. Trying to do dinner parties for the show. Yes. STK, whether it's Scottsdale, Las Vegas, yes. New York, London. I think they got one in Dubai. Maybe we yes. do there. You Let's know, do we can do all over the place. Uh, but this was episode 813 of the podcast, guys. Be a friend, yeah. tell a friend, comment, like, and subscribe on our YouTube channel at Jack O'Hara TV.